Hey guys, it's Greg. Today, I'd like to, as best as I can, try to predict data science in 2030. Is there even going to be a data scientist job in 2030? Is it some term that no one uses anymore? Like, do we only use machine learning or some other term that I don't even know what is yet because it hasn't been invented yet? Or is this just a completely dying convention? Like all this SQL, Python, machine learning, is all of this stuff just not gonna be useful because it's fully automated, because we found that it's just not useful anymore and these companies are spending too much money on nothing? Well, we're going to talk about all these possible ideas today. Now, what we are not going to talk about, very much anyway, is the idea of artificial general intelligence. Because, as you know, uh, data science is closely asso associated with artificial intelligence, and there's a lot of important skepticism uh, about the future of artificial general intelligence. Basically, creating machines that are all-encompassing, know everything, uh, and the whole idea of, like, you can download information straight to your brain. We are not going to talk about that today. I want to talk about the data scientist job in particular. And although there may be a little bit of overlap with that, I want to talk about what it means if you are going to study data science right now and if there is going to be a job market for you if you are learning skills for no reason and that type of thing okay so not too much into the ai mostly about the data scientist job i just had to get the get that out of the way so knowing that that's what we're talking about today basically no first off i don't think that data science is a dying position and i know that you probably knew that already but i would not put in like years worth of work like every day hustling to make as much content on data science as possible trying to educate you with the best materials make the best materials of my own research and study this stuff and read all the books as possible that is what i do if you didn't know that that's what i do uh, i do other things as well but i wouldn't be doing all of that stuff if i thought that the this was just some dying profession. Now, some things are a little bit tricky here because some things most definitely can be automated quite well and are very thorough, very, very in the progress um, and almost done some of these things. Now, in particular, uh, some machine learning stuff is well automated to do with tabular data. Now, what we mean by that, or what I mean by that, is SQL is uh, basically its job is to, when you're querying, uh, you pull various data from different tables and then you merge them together in one table. Uh, and then very commonly, you might want to do analytics uh, or machine learning where we take a subset of those columns and try to predict another column as to automate something, uh, usually like a supervised learning model where we can do like a regression or we can do a classification to try and automate things. That's mainly why machine learning is a thing. Uh, I'm sure you've also heard of like the whole self-driving car revolution, natural language processing. That ties in relatively similarly as well, uh, but it's a little bit more complicated. And so it has to, it is different in this regard. Uh, the main process of what uh, data scientists did for a long time was you would do SQL to kind of move around tables and you would run a machine learning model on a given table. And that's why you would, well, you would hire a data scientist and you would tell them to do that and then they would do that. Uh, and then what is what has happened is that machine learning models, uh, the research and computers have gotten really, really good at automating and uh, trying different combinations to make very good machine learning models. Uh, in particular, XGBoost and, uh, and other tree-based models, as well as some neural networks, are very, very good nonlinear models to make, uh, to make these machine learning models work well. Uh, and although there may be still some tr tips and tricks uh, that data scientists use, you've probably heard of the term feature engineering, um, there is occasionally some tips and tricks that they would use to try and make things better. And while this will always be a thing and continue to be a thing, I'll talk more about that shortly, uh, a lot of this stuff is automated and you can get a pretty good model. And what's important about me saying a pretty good model is that this is a probability thing. This is a kind of judge judging by yourself what it means to be a good model or maybe just from some metrics so you can automate what is a good model. We need say 90% accuracy or, or an eight, uh, a 0.8 F1 score, whatever. We can, we can uh, specify some threshold or we can just look for ourselves what is a good model. Uh, and while a computer might not be great at looking at things and judging, um, it can still do these metric things very, very well and uh, threshold and pick, pick one that works well. 
And since it's able to find these things very well, well, this does actually cause a concern for some data scientists because, well, we don't really need uh, a data scientist to go in and try every possible variable combination and, and do a bunch of pre-processing techniques because we have models that work well. And we also have systems that are able to try many different models and use uh, in a, like a bunch of different models together, make an ensemble or an average of models and try and get the best result there. Computers can do that for us. Uh, and there's known libraries like AutoSQ Learn or um, that other one that I'm forgetting right now. It's, it's Pi something, I believe. Uh, Pi, Pi Caret or Pi Caret, I forget how it's called, is a well-known one as well. Okay, so some of this stuff is being automated. Now, what parts are going to have trouble being automated? Well, the parts that would have trouble being automated are the parts that you would really do by hand. And that is, well, the joining of tables. Notice how I said SQL, it, its job, you know, you, its job is to grab different tables, merge them together in a way that you design uh, so that you can get the columns that you want together. Um, while a computer is very, like that's an algorithm that's not very difficult, is to do a join and to, to merge things together. Of course, we're just telling the computer to do that. Uh, what is difficult still is moving that stuff around in a way that makes sense. Um, and it's it's not like a computer can't deal with null values it's, or, or, or other problems like that. It, the problem is that we a computer really doesn't know what it should move around. Like if we have data stored in some weird uh, data lake over here and we have a nice data warehouse where we have this information and maybe you want to join them up or whatever sort of weird data combinations that you might have, whether it's clean or messy, uh, clean and clean or clean and dirty, whatever sort of combinations you have that you think makes sense, uh, a computer is going to have a really tough time figuring that out and we're probably not even going to tell them to try. Uh, so this is why you might see many different LinkedIn posts out there on like, hey, no, the data scientist job, some parts are being automated, but what the, the parts that aren't being automated are where you're, you're actually doing stuff by hand. You're like doing the messy cleaning. And uh, cleaning doesn't necessarily mean like removing null values again. Like it's not, it's not that a computer can't do that. It's that it can't move stuff around. It doesn't know what you'd want to move around and combine. Um, and it also doesn't have any idea if there is some sort of sophisticated approach um, for machine learning models, uh, some sort of feature engineering approach that, uh, you know, something, something weird that uh, might work really well, but uh, the computer doesn't know. Uh, I'm not going to talk in particular about my my experience, but uh, my last internship, once the paper once the paper comes out, I'd love to explain it. Uh, but basically, we had some really weird. Um, we at first we weren't really doing anything super out of the ordinary, but then after applying some what you'd call domain knowledge, um, after I've learned the domain knowledge. Um, you know, things got a lot better. It suddenly made a lot more sense to the computer. And so this is, again, something that the computer would have a very difficult time figuring out, which is, you know, it doesn't, it just, it doesn't know. Like it's some really weird transformation that you're never going to guess to use. Uh, and that's very common in what it was, which was computer vision um, and or sort of natural language processing and these other sort of specialized domains where you might need to do these weird things that you might not expect. Okay, and so for this reason, I know that I've talked a lot about machine learning automation, and that wasn't the title of this video, but that really is why it wraps up to the fact that a data scientist job in 2030 is probably still going to be around. I have no idea whether you call it a, a data scientist or not. Um, please, I, I hope that, that the, mater the term machine learning engineer is just used because uh, it's just confusing on what a data scientist does, especially if you don't use machine learning. Um, but that's the idea, is that I very strongly believe, and many other people strongly believe as well, that for that reason, and similar reasons, that the data scientist job will not be fully automated by 2030, and it's just difficult. It's very difficult to automate these sort of messy, uh, done-by-hand, domain knowledge like tasks. Anything that is not super algorithmic and super straightforward, um, the computer is going to just not know. Like, we're not going to set up these systems to automate these things. It just you'll have to think of it on the spot and try different things and see what does work. Okay, so that's basically the answer. By 2030, I think there's going to be a lot of people still doing these things. I would be very surprised if that was automated. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but that's my that's my thoughts for 
basically 2030 and beyond. So of course this video does not, although I titled it 2030 on purpose, um, there's it could apply for the distant future. I'm not really going to say anything past like 20 years or so because you know things will get weird and very the com computers are getting really strong and algorithms algorithms are getting crazy so i'm not going to talk so into the future but for the near future um and the near like kind of mid future eight five ten fifteen years um i think it's going to look like that let me know your thoughts down below um and I'll, I'll i'll talk to you there hopefully all right see you guys